Our first kiss. I remember, I remember the first time we had sex. <laughs> but I don't remember the first kiss. Made love. Okay. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it's... Were they accurate? I'm increasingly uncomfortable with this state of affairs. It is. It's like when we went to the hotel this last weekend, and the woman asked if we would be okay with one king-size bed. I mean, there are a lot of assumptions, I think, that people make. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't see any <laughs> reasons to, to stoke the flames. To stoke the flames. Um, when I met Jerry, <laughs> you know, he was a guy. <laughs>
not long after we had started doing Penny Arcade and uh, speak to some of the computer, at that time now they finally had like a computer class, like a computer science or something like that. We're old. And uh, I told them that it's super hard now, but that once you get out of here, geeks run everything. It's so much better, you know? I mean, once I got out, you always hear about those people who say like, oh, high school was the best time of my life. And at this point, I feel bad for them. Because <laughs> it's so short compared to everything else, you know? Yeah, life keeps going after that. So, I, yeah, you're in good company, man. So we had both taken journalism class. Well, I brought my portfolio to class in order to try and secure a job as a cartoonist. paper cartoonist. Yeah. Um, and I looked at the, I asked to look at his portfolio and I think that he liked that I had asked that. I did. Uh, he showed interest in my works. <laughs> and I appreciated that. Yeah. Um, and it was good. Yeah. And it got better. We moved in together uh, after high school. Yeah. Well, the idea was that we would live together and work together, but we just played video games. The reason why they don't play uh, competitively against each other is because um, like they, they literally want to strangle each other. And we're both super passive aggressive is the problem. So we would play StarCraft, but to lose at StarCraft... A tactical game. A tactical game, you just feel like you're stupid. You're stupid. And then we would have to work together on something afterwards. And it's like, well, if you're so fucking smart, why don't you just draw the goddamn comic? That's true. You, 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 you kicked me out of your house, but it wasn't about a video game. No, that wasn't about video games. That was, that was about writing. Didn't, that was because you didn't believe in God. Yeah. That was about a writing thing. Yeah. We had a, you know, we were writing something that had to do with difficult themes, and uh, I did not treat them with the necessary respect. <laughs> Respect they are, uh, they should be afforded, yeah. and um, it created problems. He kicked me out of his house, and then, but then that night around nine, you called me up and said, "No, I do." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah," and then it was then it was you know, BFF. Well, it's like any relationship, right? It, it is like any relationship, whether that's working, whether that's friendship, whether that's uh, you know you're cohabitating with someone. It is you are constantly trying to to figure out where all of the pieces fit and how to minimize, you know, friction, maximize happiness type of thing. Uh, and, you know, after doing this for, my God, they've known each other for nearly, for nearly 20 years now. Uh, I would like to think that they've, they've figured out a lot of shit since then. Seeing them on stage actually is really a good way of, of looking at uh, Game and Tycho rather. Um, but you can also see a lot of themselves coming out in there. I have a two-part question. One, I love you guys. Do you love me? <laughs> I just met you. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready to commit. All right. Uh, Jerry is always the diplomat, and Michael is very much the, uh, I guess, I don't want to say the loose cannon, all right, but he is uh, a little more unhinged than, uh, than, than Jerry is. Jerry is... Um, is oftentimes considered the uh, the the nice one. I guess Jerry is is more jovial on the surface. Mike is is uh, I think he knocked you guys knocked on the door for a fourth panel. And he said, "What's up, assholes?" You're like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say that you are a bad person. That I like to offend people. Well, yeah. And what I like about hanging out with you is that I seem better. You look like a saint. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. When I know not, full not because well, I'm good, not because no. I'm good. But because I am less bad than you. Well, no, it's not even that. We're both very similar in that we have a lot of the same ideas and, you know, we like a lot of the same jokes, but I think I end up being the one that says them so that uh, he, we have this sort of plausible deniability, right? Where he can be the reasonable one. Yeah. And I can be the ridiculous one. You like to agree with me in private. But you like to you like to look good on stage, which I think is fine. Well, no, uh, what I what one I, of us has to. Well, no, that's that's it. Yeah, is that somebody has to be the person you can agree with? <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yeah. Even if it's just fifty percent of this fucking company, <laughs> you know what I mean. Someone has to it's play the like, reasonable. Well, yeah, well, yeah. He don't listen. A monster. <laughs> He's such a bad person. We are so much in agreement on this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's I like, have to deal with him all the time. Exactly. I'm just as angry as you are. Yeah. That's is it. the core assertion. Yeah. Are you guys feel educated now? Is there any way I could get a hug out of you? Okay, you can have one hug. Now, choose this day whom you will hug. <laughs> choose wisely, for as the correct hug brings everlasting life, <laughs> the wrong hug will take it from you. <laughs> Mike is more overtly, or initially, I guess, the bad guy, but we've all seen the ping pong episodes. We've all seen Dark Jerry emerge. So I got to go with Jerry for the villain. You know, I actually already spent some time with Jerry, and I'd love to get some love from Mike. That's correct. <laughs> Come on, get up here. It's real. It's really happening. It seems like Mike is is coming up with the crazy ideas. Jerry refines that, and then Mike provides the the final temper, if I can use bladesmithing as an analogy, and. Uh, Whatever it is, whatever their alchemy is, it, it absolutely works so well. Uh, none of this would be around without it, that's for sure. Mike is very much the, uh, sort of like the broad strokes idea guy, and Jerry is probably the best uh, punch-up person I've ever seen. Yeah, I like the support because it it takes the focus. It takes the focus off me. I don't really like having the focus. Uh, I, I think that uh, I don't deserve it, would be the way I would put it. Um, but also that I'm not, yeah, th that's it, that's it. I think that I'm best at helping other people succeed. I don't know what my role is. I guess to be enabled? Visionary? Yeah, <laughs> I think that's super. I think that would be very funny if he didn't have a defined role. Just what your purpose was was to be enabled by others. <laughs> my my role is to be handicapped in some way that uh, requires you, that requires your help. I guess I would describe it as they keep each other sane, right? I think they're both so unique that they are the only ones who could really understand each other and they probably understand the other person better than they understand themselves. That friendship and that uh, that relationship that they have is what actually creates the engine for Penny Arcade, which is the creative output. Building a company dependent and surrounding a friendship is a terrible idea, uh, but for this particular instance, it is it works. Well, and also I think that we, um... You know, work? No, you know, much much like the Paula Abdul song, uh, opposites attract. We are. It, it ain't friction. You know, what I mean, it's, it's not, a natural fact. Yeah. Um, we come together because opposites attract. What sort of thing would bring the comic to an end? A sus sniper's uh, bullet? <laughs> if they opened up a Red Robin, I think, in <laughs> Fremont... Like a really close one? Like if it was within walking distance? <laughs> yeah, that'd be tough. Because you just you buy the fries one time and then... They're bottomless. 